Hola, hola, hola. Mwah. Welcome back to the Village Princess channel. My name is Ira Manyes Pesic and I'm back with the story time for you. Today's story is about a very delicate topic. Uh, it's about mental health. Mental health is a very delicate topic, especially in a black African community. We tend not to want to talk about that topic because it's very often associated with being crazy or with having bad spirits in the family or with being a witch. And when somebody in the family has problems with mental health or with panic attacks or depression or anxiety, they tend to take you to the Sangomas, to the traditional healers, so that they can kick the, the, the bad spirits, the bad energies out of you. They say that sometimes uh, they're using you so that they can punish their, the family through you. Or they will take you to the church and then they for the, the, the priest to pray the devil out of you. And for that reason, many family members or many families, many people in the community, they tend not to talk about it. And even people, when they feel like they have signs of mental health, they're struggling with depression, anxiety, panic attacks, they tend not to say anything publicly because of the fear of being judged and being put in a, in a, in a, in a box or in a corner. But today, when I say today, nowadays, after all the, the, the pandemic and all the effects of the, 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 the lockdowns and all the change of life that we were forced to, I feel like it's about time that we normalize to talk about mental health because this cannot be a taboo anymore because it's so close to us, it's close to home. Even I, I found out that I have anxiety and depression. This is something that growing up, I never had a problem. Anyone that knows me know that I'm a very happy person. I've always been a happy person, even though with other struggles, but I never had the anxiety. But lately, I find myself having anxiety and panic attacks. And uh, if I can talk about myself and inspire somebody out there, why not? This story has two main characters. This will be Titi and Dylan. And I'll be narrating the story from Dylan's perspective. One day I come home after a few hours of being out of the house with a friend of mine and I find my, friend, my housemate uh, Titi in the kitchen with a towel wrapped around her. I looked and I thought it was weird but uh, I, did, I didn't do a big deal of it. I just went towards upstairs where my room is. And this is a big house, three bedroom house, <laughs> me and my fingers, three bedroom house, two rooms downstairs. One room belongs to the owner of the house, but the room is locked at all times because the owner of the house is not around. He's traveling, he's only using, renting out two rooms. And then there's Titi's room, which is a private bathroom. And then there's the big kitchen and the big terrace downstairs. And then upstairs, it's my room, my private bathroom, and a small little terrace. Is it called terrace? Small little balcony. So when I'm on my way upstairs, Titi is like, can I take a shower in your bathroom? I looked at her very surprised and I'm like, why must you take a shower in my bathroom? What's wrong with your bathroom? But what I'm asking while walking, I didn't even wait for her to respond. And I went to my room and I told her, I mean, while walking, I told her, you can't use my bathroom because I'm just here to pick up a few things and I have to leave again. So I go to my room, pick up what I have to pick up with my friend, but we keep looking at each other like, this woman is weird, but no one is saying anything. We leave go out, we end up staying out late, my friend end up sleeping over at my place. In the morning, we wake up, we go for breakfast, me and a fr my friend. So we come back home around lunchtime. Who do we find in our kitchen? One of the street kids that we know from our area. This story happened in an area called Woodstock in Cape Town. And that area is like, there's lots of houses next to each other. And in, our, in the streets, there's lots of people, you know, people lost their jobs and their homes and lots of poverty around us, us, sorry. So this boy is one of the boys that I know from that area, from the streets. And Titi has this very good thing that she does. When we have like leftover food and things, she never throws away food, she gives to the people in the street and she has a very good relationship with those people in the street. But this day, the next day after we went with a friend, come back, we find one of the boys is busy cooking in our kitchen. Big surprise. 
But the bigger surprise is that this boy is busy cooking and he's jamming with my headphones. He's listening to music, he's busy jamming, not even making a big thing that we are there. And us, we are like, what is going on here? I'm looking around to see if anything is missing in the house because this is a street kid in my home. And I'm looking to see if Titi is there. Titi is nowhere to be seen. Titi has a 10 year old daughter. The daughter is nowhere to be seen. Now we are rushing upstairs to go and see if my, my, my bedroom, if everything is safe upstairs because I have my laptop and my camera and my other things. We get up, my room is wide open. But I remember that I locked my room when I left. Panic. But when I look outside on my balcony, who's standing there with a towel around her, wet hair, smoking a cigarette? Titi, the madam of the house. Her daughter and another street kid, a younger than the one in the kitchen. They're sitting in, on my bed watching cartoons in my room. This is, is the most weird thing ever. I didn't even know how to react. And I just told the kids, please leave the room, leave my room. Titi came running to my room and like, you're not gonna chase the kids out of this room because this room belongs to the house and this is our home. We are all paying rent here and this is our home. Anybody can be anywhere they want to be. And I'm like, hell no, I am paying rent and I want my privacy. And besides, wasn't this room closed before I left? Yeah, it was closed. I opened it. Why should you close the door when we're just the three of us living in this house? I'm like, weird. But anyway, kids, get out of my room. Titi, please allow me to have my privacy. I need to spend time with my friend. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay here. This woman, is. she has a towel with, on her only. The hair is wet. The next thing... She's butt naked standing there next to me and my friend. Shock. And she's like, today you're going to stop playing hard to get. Okay, I'm speaking Shangan. <laughs> she's like, today you're going to kiss me. I am tired of you. You always play hard to get, but not anymore today. And she's like telling my friend, you need to go because this is a family matter. And the guy's like, hell no, I'm not going anywhere. She started screaming, talking weird things about demons and, and people who want to break their, our family, our family, because we are a happy family. And now when I bring people to the house, they want to destroy us. Bear you that I'm 23 years old. Titi is like 30 something, I don't know, 35, 36, and she has a 10 year old daughter. This is the first time that I'm living out of my parents' home. I just came out of my parents' home like six months ago. And now I'm in this house with this woman who is, who is a mother of a 10 year old, who has three kids in the house. And now she wants to kiss me. She's throwing herself to me. And she's telling me that she knows that I have feelings for her and we should be this happy family. You know, because it's just the three of us. If I go to the shop, I would ask her, Titi, do you need anything? She will give me the money and I'll go and get what she asked me for. And this vice versa, if she goes to the shop, she asks, do you need anything? And we just do this friendly, we have this very friendly way of living. And if she cooks, we eat together. If I cook, we eat together. And she interprets that completely different from mine. For me, it was just to create an easy, uh, friendly, peaceful living environment for three people. And for her, it was like, no boy, you're into me and I can see you and you're gonna be mine because I'm ready to be yours. That was her interpretation. But now, Titi refuses to leave the room. Titi is screaming, she's talking weird things, like talking about devils and spirits and people want to break us up. And my friend is like, dude, I think we should call the police. This is not normal. And my friend calls the police. The police takes forever to come. But meanwhile, I'm like trying to get her out of the room, but I don't know how, I think maybe because she was screaming and the daughter thought there was something wrong. The kids came running upstairs. She grabs her daughter, puts her in, kick us out of the room, but because everything was happening so quick and I didn't want to fight, I don't fight with the woman. Somehow she managed to get us out. She locked herself in my bedroom. 
we busy knocking and trying to convince her to open the door because now she's in the room she's screaming it's her and her daughter in the room we're like thinking maybe she was gonna kill herself or something she's telling me that i need to tell take my friend out of the house i need to get into that room because this house belongs to the three of us nobody else and um, the police arrives they want to understand my friend is busy explaining i'm explaining to them but we are all in panic and we are like going crazy smoking and trying to calm down the police is like trying to talk her out she's not opening the door they kick the door down they get her out sorry they get her out and uh, the girl they are trying to understand what's going on she's talking to them but she's not making sense she's talking so many different topics here and there the family the father of the daughter and this and that and she said something like i've been the father of that child because the father left her when the child was three years old and since the father left i'm the only father that the girl knows and this police officer is asking me are you guys dating i'm like hell no i never date her i'm just her flatmate i just moved here less than six months ago and we just been living together like peaceful but i never ever tried anything with her and she knows that i have a girlfriend and the police thought mm. the female police is like i think we need to call uh, child protective services here this is more is serious than what we thought they called child protective services it took forever to arrive the whole thing took the whole day but the police was so patient they were making phone calls and then we called the guy who was responsible for to rent out the house he came and then we explained to him all what was happening and we I, I told him that i'm moving out and the guy of course doesn't want the house to be empty he didn't want me to move out he called the locksmith to come and replace my bedroom door and they changed the door downstairs and somehow they the guys when they can the child services they, they took the child away the police were trying to take Titi with them, but she fought them to the point that the, the other officer thought, you know what, it's a waste of time to take her to the police station. I think we must try to take her to the hospital, mental health, something, somewhere for, for her to be ob uh, observed mentally. But they didn't want to take that responsibility. And the guy who is responsible for the house, he was like, no, in this condition, I would rather not have a, her in the house because at this point it is breaking things he's destroying the house he locks her out he locks the gate and he convinces me that i should stay in the house me and my friend we are we locked ourselves inside the house and tit is outside of the house uh, at some point we went out at night she was nowhere to be seen but uh, i for a few days i moved out of the house i was with uh, staying with a friend i came back i'm still in this house and I heard that Titi is roaming the streets. It's been like nearly 10 days. She's been roaming the streets of Woodstock with nowhere to go and talking crazy, talking to herself. She really looks like a crazy person now on the street. And uh, this is not like she was crazy. When I moved in, she had no signs of craziness or of, of being sick. She was a normal person. She has a proper job she is an accountant for an it company her daughter goes to a private school she drives we lived normal i didn't see this coming the only thing i know is that titi spent she was spending a lot of time in the house or watching netflix or working from home or smoking on, on the balcony on the terrace but i never saw her taking any drugs i never saw her like she was not even a big she's not sorry she's not a big drinker I don't know what went wrong with her, what happened, but definitely she did lose it. And until now, she's still on the streets because uh, we've been trying to get hold of her family. I don't know any of her family members. I don't know any of her friends. I never met a friend through, through her. Like I've babysat for her maybe two or three times when she went out, but I never met anyone. No one ever came to the house since I moved in looking for her or she never brought anyone to the house. Now they are trying to get hold of anybody who can, who anybody that knows her or is related to her so that she can get help. Anyway, now I'm still in this house and I'm, I'm definitely planning to move out because I'm very uncomfortable living here. 
uh, I have the whole house of myself. I'm scared that the street kids, they might come back or they might want to revenge or Titi would come with them, try to revenge or even, it's just scary. I'm not comfortable knowing that the person that I found in the house now is in the streets and I'm here in this house. <sighs> okay, thank you for watching this story. My name is Ira Manis Basic. Please, 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 if you know anybody who suffers from mental health or anything, just try to advise the person to get help or let's try to make it normal to, to acknowledge the existence of mental health, the, the, the mental struggles that the people are going through. There's no way that after all the, the trials and tribulations that we went through through the, the, the pandemic, that people are not struggling mentally. I am struggling with anxiety. I have to, I'm saying this loud. I am struggling with anxiety. I have depression sometimes. This is something that I never had before, but I couldn't help, I can't help it because my life has been changed upside down since the whole pandemic started. And uh, th this is something that I cannot control. And I believe there's so many more other people out there. Let's normalize, talk about um, mental health and try to figure out what steps to take so that we can live a normal life even though we have these kind of things going through our minds thank you for watching my video kiss kiss and i'll see you on my next story Mwah. Mwah. kubai kubai hat 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 lots of love from one the village princess <laughs>